Hey there folks and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be going over another example with you involving differentials. This is an important example because it shows how differentials might be used in fields other than just pure mathematics. So let's read the problem together. It says, a factory manufactures cylindrical cans for Zaki Snacks Foods Limited. The radius R is measured with an error of at most 2% and the height H is measured with an error of at most 5%. We are asked to estimate the greatest possible percent error in the volume of the can. Okay, lots of words here, so let's go back through and carefully dissect what's given in this problem. Uh, first of all, I notice that we're making cylindrical cans, right? I know the shape of the can that's being produced, uh, but we have some measurement errors that could be taking place. The radius of the can could be off by at most 2%. The height of the can could be off by at most 5% and we are asked to say something about the greatest possible error that could occur when calculating the can's volume. Before we jump into the solution, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my friends in the sciences, engineering, or really any field where your work involves taking precise measurements. You see, in this problem, we are taking known measurement errors and figuring out how those errors could propagate throughout the rest of our calculations. This is particularly relevant for you, so please pay close attention. All right, I'm gonna start this problem by first writing down everything that was given to me in the statement. And then I'm gonna to try to figure out what exactly needs to be shown in my solution. So first of all, I know that we're making cylindrical cans. Maybe the can looks something like this. We know that some errors could have occurred when measuring the radius of this can, R, or the height of this can, H. Specifically, we're told that the error in measuring the radius could be at most 2% and the error in measuring the height could be at most 5%. So our first step is to actually translate this information into mathematics. What does this say mathematically? Well, let's start by looking at the radius. We know that the possible measurement error is at most 2%, which is telling me that if there's any variation in our measurements, if there's any error delta R, it's at most 0.02 times the true radius R. Now, if our delta R is positive, it's saying that we've overestimated the radius. But of course, we could also underestimate. Maybe delta R is negative. But still, it's at most 2% of the true radius. So delta R is certainly larger than minus 0.02 times R. That's what this is saying mathematically. If you want to clean this up and write it a little bit more compactly, you can say that delta R divided by R in absolute value is at most 0.02. The same is true when it comes to our height measurement error. We know that this error is at most 5%, and therefore the absolute value of delta H over H is less than or equal to 0.05. Okay, fantastic. We've written down the information given to us in the problem, and now we need to figure out what exactly needs to be shown in our solution. In this problem, we're being asked to say something about the greatest possible percentage error in the calculation of this can's volume. Ah, well hold on, percentage error. That's something we've just discussed. The greatest possible percentage error in the radius is shown here, and the greatest possible percentage error in the height is shown here. We'd now like to establish a similar inequality using the volume of the can V. Specifically, we're looking for an approximate upper bound on the absolute value of the percent error, delta V over V. How might we do this? Well, we know that the volume depends on both the radius and the height, right? It's a function of two variables. We also know that if the changes in these variables are very, very small, then the resulting change in the volume will be approximately equal to dV, the differential of the volume. According to what we discussed in our last lesson, dV is equal to partial V over partial R, dR, plus partial V over partial H, dH. Here, R and H are playing the roles of X and Y, and V is playing the role of the function F. Ah, but check it out. We can compute these partial derivatives using our volume formula. The partial of V with respect to R is 2 pi RH, we multiply by dR, and then the partial derivative of V with respect to H is pi R squared, and we multiply by dH. This gives us an approximation for the change in volume. But of course, we're interested in finding a bound for this expression, the absolute value of delta V over V. 
So our next step is to divide both sides of this expression by v and take the absolute value. Okay folks, up to now we found upper bounds on the absolute value of delta r over r, the absolute value of delta h over h, and we found an approximation for the change in our volume delta v. We are interested in estimating this quantity, delta v over v. So I'm going to divide both sides of this expression by my volume, pi r squared h. What I get is delta v over v is approximately equal to 2 pi r h dr divided by pi r squared h plus pi r squared dh divided by pi r squared h. Ooh, now check it out. We're going to have lots of cancellation here. Specifically, in my first term, I can cancel both pi's, an r, and my h terms, leaving me with simply 2 dr over r. In my second term, I can cancel the pi's, both r's, and I'm simply left with dh over h. At this point, we're ready to wrap up the problem. We're ready to estimate this quantity in absolute value. To see why, notice that on the right-hand side, we have 2 dr over r plus dh over h. When the changes in r and h are really small, delta r and dr, they're the same thing. Delta H and DH, they're the same thing. So I could write this as 2 delta R over R plus delta H over H. And you see, we have estimates on these two quantities. So what I'm going to do is apply the absolute value to both sides of this expression and see if I can use these estimates to say something about delta V over V. We have that the absolute value of delta V over V is approximately equal to the absolute value of 2 delta R over R plus delta H over H. Now I'd really like to bring the absolute value into the sum and apply it to both terms separately. That way I could use the estimates we have up here. Of course, I can't do that for free. Absolute values and sums don't play nicely together. But I can do it at the cost of an inequality, right? This is our triangle inequality. This says that my expression is less than or equal to 2 times the absolute value of delta R over R plus the absolute value of delta H over H. But now we know that the first expression is less than or equal to 0 0.02. So this whole first term is less than or equal to 0 0.04. The second term is less than or equal to 0 0.05. This is telling me that the absolute value of delta V over V is approximately less than or equal to 0.09. If we have measurement errors in R and H given by these quantities here, then we can expect at most approximately a 9% error in the measurement of our volume.